Shalom, Kala Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rakhon Kadash. Double honors, my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect, where the house of David be born again in this generation. And Shalom to the 130 Asherala, who today were known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Before losing our true heritage, we were known as, and still are, the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about how the so-called Jews are going to start World War III and how it's biblical. But before we get into that, let's read this. This is Jeremiah 50 and 45. Therefore, hear ye the counsel of Yahweh Bashem Shai, that he hath taken against Babylon and his purposes that he hath purposed against the land of the Chaldeans, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. Now, it tells you here that the Lord has a, has a scheme or a plan to draw out Babylon, right? The land of the Chaldeans. Now, what is this talking about? America, right? Babylon is referring to America in the scriptures, right? America is Babylon the Great, right? It's also referred to as the land of the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans being like the high-end witches, the elites, the occultists uh, here in the land, right? Because if you're unaware, the American power elite, for the most part, are Satanists. And in doing so, they're wizards and they're warlocks and witches, okay? Now, that's why it says the land of the Chaldeans. Well, the Lord is going to bring the Edomites out of America. And when I say that, I'm talking about their, their armies, their fighting men, right? He's going to lure these Babylonians, these Americans, into the Middle East. And why is that? Well, we can tell us here, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Now, who is the least of the flock? Well, none other than your so-called Jews, right? These people, the so-called Jewish people, are biblically referred to as the Amalekites, right? Because they descend from Amalek. Now, as it tells you here, it says, the so-called Jewish people of today are biblically known as the nation of the Amalekites, who are the descendants of Amalek, the first grandson of Esau, which makes them the head tribe of the Edomites. Right? And when I when when it says that, the head tribe of the Edomites, basically the Caucasians and the Jewish, so-called Jewish people, they're the same, right? The you could have what you would refer to as an American or a so-called Caucasian person, but they're actually Jews, right? And and the reason is because they are the same people, though they pretend to be different people, right? You have the whole KKKs hating Jewish people, which is a bunch of bullshit. You know, you have the, you know, people acting like, for example, like uh, you have uh, the guy from Facebook, right? He tries to act like um, like he's an American. No, he's a, he's a so-called Jew. You also got people like the Rothschilds, so other, you know, or or this guy here, I forgot, he's like a dickhead politician, I forgot his name. But, um, you know, these people here, they pretend that they're, that they're uh, not Caucasian, but they are, right? They're just simply a, a, a different tribe of the Caucasian clan, right? They are the head tribe, Amalek, right? And why is that? Well, because let's take a look at the family tree, right? Esau, you know, were, you know, had a child with Ada, right? And that child was Eliphaz. Now Eliphaz, he had a child with his concubine, Tina. And well, they produced a child called Amalek. 
right? And Amalek, his descendants, when you trace it down, you go through and you know line up prophecy. It's the so-called Jews, right? And these people, they're, they're they're straight up wicked, right? They were the first people to actually attack the Israelites after their exodus out of uh, out of the land of Egypt. Man, they they're the ones who you know went to war with us, right? And that's why it tells you this. It says Exodus 17 and 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Yahweh Nisi. For he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that Yahweh Bashimashai will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Right? And when you get into history and you get into like all the things going on, you know, with us, the Israelites, and what's happened to us in history, it's always been these people here who have been at the forefront, right? They've, you know, for the most part, paid for, they were the financial arm behind the whole North Atlantic slave trade. Now they own the ships, right? You look at today's captivity, they're in charge of all the banks, the governments, everything here in America, these guys are just running it, right? And there's so many other examples, but that's another video. Well, the reason why I bought this this lesson out is because, like that scripture says in Jeremiah, the least of the flock will draw the Americans out to the Middle East to fight World War III and ultimately go through Armageddon, and which is going to end in their destruction. And this article here basically made me think of this. This is, says, Israel threatens attack on Iran if Vienna nuclear talks don't go its way. Now, if you've been paying attention to those Vienna talk, nuclear talks, they're basically trying to get Iran to stop working and developing nuclear weapons, right? But for the most part, ever since Trump has come around, the Iranians, they're not listening to to anything man they are not trying to make deals with the americans especially after the killing of their top general um salamani right and all these other things that have been going on iran's on a war path right and the thing is is they've been very stubborn and defiant at these nuclear talks where america and these other nations have been trying to for the most part bribe iran to drop their nuclear nuclear weapons program but they're not doing it right they're, like i said they're being uncooperative and israel they constantly keep basically threatening them with uh with destruction uh you know especially with what's going on now with these nukes and how they've now you know you know they reported are developing nuclear grade or at least have enriched or are starting to enrich uranium to the levels of being nuclear grade right meaning that they're you know coming close to creating a nuclear bomb themselves right now we all know israel has a bomb you know like there's a there was a famous leaked uh news art news conference that talked about how israel has nuclear weapons here we'll watch it so an email has recently come to light an exchange between jeffrey Leeds and former secretary of state colin powell in which he acknowledges that israel has quote has he says 200 nuclear weapons um and the nuclear non-proliferation treaty has not been signed by israel um uh, under u.s law the united states should cut off support to israel because it's a nuclear power that has not signed the nuclear non-proliferation treaty according to colin powell correct Shouldn't you ask Colin Powell that? I, 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 I'm not okay. going to speak to this particular traffic, and uh, I'm certainly so not going to discuss. Doesn't have nuclear weapons. I'm certainly not going to discuss matters of intelligence from the from the podium, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I, have no, I have no comment on that. Okay. Well, the the email says the boys in Tehran know Israel has 200, all we targeted on Tehran, and we have thousands. I mean, that that seems to indicate that, that there's a knowledge of an Israeli nuclear program, which would make USA to Israel illegal. I, I think I've answered your question. Okay, well, let me. So there you go. 
right? So that reporter did his job, man. Right? He, uh, you know, showed that America is a hypocrite, right? Giving all the billions of dollars in aid to uh, Israel or the Israelis when they don't, when they, you know, don't qualify for it since they are, they didn't sign that non-nuclear pro proliferation agreement, man. So that being said, let's go and read this article and see what these devils are up to. It says, Israel continuing to threaten Iran with military attack as the latter re-engages world powers in Vienna in hopes of restoring to the 2015 JCPOA nuclear deal. As we detailed earlier, Israeli Prime Minister Neftali Bennett phoned Secretary of State Anthony Blinken on Thursday in order to urge that the U.S. abandon talks together. It, it's well known that, the, that Israel has been opposed to any restored deal but actually urging that the U.S. and Iran side, sides not even dialogue in Vienna is a new request. Iran is engaged in nuclear blackmail as a negotiation tactic. This must lead to an immediate suspension of the talks in Vienna and to harsh retaliation steps by the world powers, Bennett told Blinken. The revelation of the phone call came the same day Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz said Israel is still holding out the option of military attack on the Islamic Republic. The defense chief words were issued to the Israeli newspaper Yedat Aronoth. He told the publication, I do think we always have to prepare the option for the moment when we may find ourselves alone, right? And so you see, man, these is Israel, these Amalekites, they want to go to war, man, right? They don't even want America to try to, you know, talk these guys down, right? No, these guys want a war, right? Because they believe now. What does the, the scripture say, man, in Obadiah, that thy pride has deceived thee? See, they think that, that they're going to be able to uh, benefit and ultimately win in this upcoming war, right? They don't realize that they're going to fall because of the Lord's will, right? I, you know, Iran, Russia, and China, they ultimately will, will prevail over the Western powers and America and Israel, right? So says the, the Bible, right? And ultimately, that's when the Lord's gonna come back, when these, you know, right before these nuclear weapons hit, and he's gonna destroy the, these nations, man. So they're gonna have, they're gonna basically be, you know, all bloodied and blued right before they get hit by these uh, nuclear missiles, man. And that's gonna be their, the story of these devils. Continuing. I say again, an attack against Iran is an option. It doesn't have to be the first one. He under, underscored Gantz Express followed this with, the U.S. as a world leader will stand behind its promise and responsibility. Given the recent spat of Israeli sabotage attacks on Iranian infrastructure as well as as nuclear sites, it doesn't. It does appear Tel Aviv is readying a Plan B for the aftermath of Vienna talks. However, it will be much harder for it to act militarily and out in the open should the U.S. in the end link an agree ink an agreement with Iran and and other JCPOA signatories. In October, it was revealed that the Israeli government approved a $1.5 billion budget to prepare for a potential future attack on Iran, the Times of Israel detailed at the time. Damn, $1.5 billion, man. These guys, they're, they're, they're about that life, man. They are spending vast fortunes to, to get ready for war. 
It says, Israel has approved a budget of some 5 billion shekels, 1.5 billion US dollars, to be used to prepare the military a potential strike against Iran's nuclear program, Channel 12 reported Monday. It includes funds for various types of aircraft intelligence gathering drones and unique armaments needed for such an attack, which would have to target heavily fortified underground sites. Right? And why do they need underground sites? Well, Iran, they actually have these vast networks of underground tunnels that they've been developing and building these nuclear uh, uh, missiles, right? Not missiles yet, but you know, uh, you know, missiles nonetheless, and then also basically enriching, um, enriching the nukes or the uranium, excuse me. Right? That's why these devils want target heavily fortified underground sites because these do look. You know, massive man, they, and they look fairly impressive, like underground structures that Iran has built. Right? Continuing, it says the unsourced report said much of Iran's mid and long range missile arsenal remains in underground bunkers ready to deploy as part of a large network of below surface missile cities. It says, hence the report's mention of munitions that could penetrate underground. It says, report Israel stockpiling weapons for possible attack on Iran. And they're going, they're, they're about to get this war going, man. And you, a lot of our people out here are out there worrying about some sort of new CD being dropped or some, you know, sort of blacks and or latino celebrity man which doesn't mean shit right a lot of our people are are oblivious to the, the facts that may soon lead us to world war three but hey that's just part of the that's just part of of the, the delusion that is upon our people and part of of uh what the lord has for it for these two-thirds of our people and the rest of the world man he's making these devils you know hypnotize people with games sports food and a lot of our people fall for them man you know that's all they need to be happy but you know what can you say man this truth just isn't for everybody but let's read this this is Joel 3 and 9 proclaim ye this amongst the Gentiles Prepare war, make up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I am strong, assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh Shai. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Right? So you see, ultimately, man, the Lord has commanded all these nations in the world to basically build up their armies, build up their, their fighting capabilities. Okay? That's why spiritually these other countries are getting it in their mind to build up their military power. You got, you know, the English breakaway countries, France, Germany, and I forgot who else, but now they're talking about creating their own standing army at the UN, right? You had, um, you have all these other countries like now Israel and Pakistan are now nuclear powers, which is crazy, right? All these things are, are coming together because the Lord willed it, right? And another thing that the scripture talks about, it says, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Well, look at North Korea, man. They're starving their people so that way they can 
build up and 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 set up a military that could that they could use to attack South Korea, which really they're gonna be using that power to attack America. And that's just the way it is, right? It says this is Numbers 24 and 20. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. Right? And you see, these Amalekites, they're soon going to perish along with their brethren, the Edomites. Right? Because what's going to happen is, this World War III that's going to break out is not going to be be pretty for them. It actually, in fact, it's going to be their utter end, right? First, they're going to, you know, go into World War III confident, more than likely, thinking that they got it in, in the bag. But what's going to happen is that the Lord's going to basically foul up their plans. He's going to foul up their, their uh, agenda. Right? What does the scripture say? It says, when he's about to fill his belly, then shall I strike him through? And that's what's ultimately going to happen. Man. These Edomites are going to find out what it is to, to lose badly, to be, and to go into slavery and to, you know, serve a thousand years of hard bondage. And then the, uh, the end to come for them. Man. Because, again, what does the scripture say? that his latter end shall be that he perish forever. All right, well, hopefully this video will better find Aki. I just wanted to read that article to show you, man, that, you know, we're close, man. These devils at the top, man, they want war, right? They're biting at the bit to uh, get Iran to do something so that way they have a justification to take them out, right? But, hey, you know, keep keep fighting Akiem, you know, keep stay focused, start, you know, uh, prepare little things for yourselves in the, in the coming time. But uh, again, hopefully this video was out of fun. So without all that, I want to give all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahushai, Ba'ashem Rekha Bardash, the waters, my teachers, the apostles, and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.